before your face and why you only looking at propaganda news and not going to research any stuff for yourself and why you believing in this part two party system that Democrats this way, public this way, and you don't want to say, wait a minute, Oz is behind the curtain. The, the real the real power is behind the curtain. Let me get on. Okay. So few Americans, I want to read it. Few Americans have ever learned the truth that the Revolutionary War of 1776 was a direct result of the Illuminati's plan to achieve world government. Now, what did, and I don't know, let me see if, you, if, you, if you, they probably need teachers. People don't even know that, but what was the 1776 war? Revolution. The Revolutionary War when America did what? They broke off. They broke off from Britain. What did they say it was over? Taxes. No, the tea was the kick, was the uh, incident, the boss tea party, but the, the reason was the taxes. They were being taxed by Britain and not being represented in the nation by Britain, but they was, in other words, the money was going offshore. And they were saying, no, we don't need to be sending our money to a king. And that's where all this revolution came from. And this is when these men formed, got guns, muskets, whatever you want to say. And they, this is what we were taught. Come on now, this is what we were taught. Are y'all there? But few Americans have ever learned that the Revolutionary War of 1776 was a direct result of the Illuminati's plan to achieve world government, also the New World Order. This has been America's secret destiny since the very beginning, as outlawed, as outlined in and evidence in the 33rd degree Freemason and prolific author Manly P. Hall. There's another name you need to research. Manly P. Hall. He laid out the whole plan of the Freemasons had or the Luciferians had for America. It's, he has this very insightful book called America's Secret Destiny. You can, I got that book on, I downloaded it. You can download it. It's in PDF form. You can download it off the internet. It was Manly P. Hall who correctly stated, the best place to hide a lie is between two truths. Ain't that good? As it is, as so, and so it is in society today, Hall also states that the most effective deception is the half-truth because in part it can be contested and incontestable logic. Which is, now who, who, who deals in half-truths? Cunning masters of deceit, lies, and swaying public opinion for their organization's secret agenda. You can also read Ralph A. Epperson's excellent eye-opening uh, eye -opening, uh, PowerPoint presentation which explains in detail how the New World Order is being formed and its beginnings. Let me read you an excerpt, uh, let's see, of America's Secret Destiny. It says, uh, the official government seal has been on the back of the U.S. dollar since the 1930s. Occultists love to place occult symbols in plain view, mocking the in ignorance of the common man. This is why you say, why would they, if they doing it, why, they, why would they put it out in plain sight? Why are they putting pyramids right in our face? Why are they putting all CNI? Why is it all in our face? Why is the cult symbols and all the music stuff? Because it's just like them telling you how stupid you are. Like we doing it right in your face. The same way that Nana, they did it right in our one. They did it right in people's face and then tell you, tell you that these some hijackers with box cutters took two, took three jets and flew them into planes with our greatest defense system. And the Arabs did it, but we went and fought Saddam. Now we are in partner with the Arabs to fight ISIS. Amen. <laughs> now the Arabs was the one that flew it into the building. But now we partner with them to fight ISIS. We didn't fight the Arabs, we went to fight Saddam. Right. And Bin Laden. Amen. But now we cool with the Arabs. The, the, the Arabs was the one, the hijacks was Arab. Right. Nobody ever said that Larry Silverstein... The owner of the World Trade Center had just bought them three months ago. It took out an insurance policy specifically for planes flying in the buildings. And they was in trouble because people was not renting the Trade Center anymore. They couldn't rent it out. It wasn't renting very well. And nobody talks about Building 7. They just happened to fall. Nothing going to get back, no plane, no fire, no damage. But Larry Silver 16 said within a couple of hours, I told him to pull it. Now that's a 40 some story building it takes months to demolition the building so for him to say pull it you can't demolition a building in two hours so that means it was already had to be demolition the problem was that one of the planes that went down was supposed to come and strike that building but i think it was taken down it was another i remember it was another plane 
that one was supposed to probably fly into that set, Bill 7. It didn't happen, so they had to figure out a way to lie about that. Now, the official story says that, set, that what is it, 15 hijackers or whatever, they flew plane, and you can't figure this out. The same way with this ISIS thing. ISIS is just a false flag. How in the world is how in the world can they got satellites that can see you and hear you? They found the NSA staff spies on everybody. They were spying on governments and everything. Everybody is tracked now by these global positioning satellites. How is these people getting to do anything? How can they get into this nation? How? How can they get into this nation when everybody's being spied upon? That ought to make you think, wait a minute, then you can you mean you can stop me from shoplifting, but you can't stop cats from coming across the border. Where you got satellites pointed at that border watching the movement. Come on. They need a boogeyman. What do they need a boogeyman for? The last real calamity that's going to totally take the rights away from Americans. It's one more big false flag coming. Now, I feel like I have a right to say that when, you, when I studied all the false flag. Study the Boston bombing. That was so obvious. They have people... A lady that was walking after the bombing with a line of blood in a, in a bag coming out of her coat. It was a tool. And she was walking after, before the bombing. I mean, when the bombing went off, she was walking. When the camera got on this lady again, she was on the ground with blood on her. But they saw this tube sticking out where the blood was coming out of her. It's all false flag where you people get in trouble with because some stuff is so big that it blows the mind of all average people why would they do that why would why would i why would they do stuff like this because it understand the secret destiny of america is to bring the new world order america has christians that won't stop we used to not stop praying against it so they have to do things they, listen, the armies are being formed not for the world. They form an armies for here. These uh, homeland security stuff, that's to police us. These concentration FEMA camps they got now, that's for housing American people. That's not for foreigners. Y'all hear what I'm saying? So somebody knows that the problem is this Christian, so-called Christian nation. It's not the nation, it's the people. The Christian people that still have Christian understanding and Christian values. That's the problem. Why? Because these people will never fall. They'll never bow to this new, to this thing. They'll never bow. So is it the war on dissent, or rather, the war on terrorism? Well, that's what many folks are asking, especially after the FBI raided the homes of several anti-war actors and leaders in Minneapolis, Chicago, and possibly other cities in the Midwest. Now, members of the FBI's Joint Terrorism Task Force apparently seized personal photos, computers, and cell phones, also serving federal grand jury subpoenas on several activists. Well, former Ronald Reagan official and columnist Paul Craig Roberts joins me now from Georgia. Good to see you there, Dr. Roberts. So the FBI on Friday searched eight addresses in Minneapolis and Chicago, including uh, the home of the executive director of the Arab American Action Network. Apparently the feds uh, were looking for connections between local anti-war activists and groups in Colombia and the Middle East. But, you know, some people aren't buying that justification. I want you to talk a little bit more about the way that the FBI is painting this search. What do you think is really going on here? Well, the anti-war protesters themselves have said that this is an attempt to uh, uh, an attempt to uh, intimidate them so that they cease organizing uh, more anti-war demonstrations. I think it's much more serious even than that. And what the United States government is doing is establishing in the public's mind that anyone who criticizes the so-called war on terror is giving a material aid to terrorism. You see, we don't have a war against Iraq or war against Afghanistan. We have a war against terror. And under the rubric of terror, uh, the government has stripped us of our civil liberties. And so what they're doing now is to create the impression and get public acceptance of the idea that people who protest the war against terror are aligned with terrorists. And, and the definition of material support is one of those very vague police state, uh, police state terms that can be uh, interpreted however the government wants. For example, show, and I'm, I'm pretty sure because this is something that you can, I can even 
different show, you know, by just going online and, and having a look, is that there has been an explosion in people complaining about organized stalking and gang stalking. So for the last um, 16, 20 years, there has been this steady rise and ever more people complaining. Um, and they seem to say all the same thing. I'm being ganged up on. That's number one. But also strange scenes are happening over and over to me. So much more than, you know, than is normal. And um, what's also quite telling is that a lot of um, older people are reporting this, but also young people. And um, so for a long time, it has been just stamped as, oh, this is just um, paranoia, schizophrenia. But just stamping it like that and not doing the data analysis or not doing the actual um, investigation is, is just not good enough because now it has literally exploded. So what is actually intermixed? And I'm now going to talk about the second half. And with every case, I'm not saying every case, um, is uh, one of the two categories. What I'm now talking about is the other category that is completely ignored by psychiatrists. So psychiatrists who have typically their you know knowledge from what they learned at university and what their you know field is printing in these magazines and these um, you know on congresses and and these sort of um, educational um, courses. Well. All the knowledge that's presented there is based on just psychiatry and is based on typically the knowledge of the past 10 or past 20 or even past 30 years. Um, and that doesn't take into account developments that are now happening and can be shown to happen. So I'm not going to talk about psychiatry because I'm absolutely not qualified to talk about that. But I'm going to talk about that aspect, which on the other hand, none of the psychiatrists are qualified to talk about, but which you can also map um, if you're studying current affairs or, you know, there's many, many other um, indications and I'm going to explain that. So I'm going to talk about the second category, which is what's always ignored. And the second category is the fact that the intelligence agency's budget has exploded. It has literally exploded. And for the United Kingdom, we've got very precise data because MI5's budget has doubled. This is absolutely unprecedented in the history of, I think, any intelligence agency. But it actually doubled. So, And that was in 2003. So you can look it up on The Guardian and many other newspapers reported about that. But in 2003, the budget doubled. Okay, so what this means is that before you had already MI5, a big sprawling organization covering the entirety of UK because they have to, right? I mean, they have to keep the entirety of the UK safe. Um, and now the financial flow into this organization is such that from you know that year onwards you can keep a second organization right this is what it means when the budget doubled before it sustained an organization of a certain size suddenly after that it can all sustain two organizations of exactly the same size so when an organization is given this much money, and this is a fact now, I'm not talking about hypotheses, this is a fact, the budget doubled, end of story. Um, when this happens, a, a, um, an organization will have to use the money quickly, and, and typically if they don't use the money, you know that from the local council, for example, I mean, councils are famous for just digging up roads in, I think, in, in uh, spring in the UK, because the financial year ends in spring, and if they haven't spent the money, then they, they are not getting it the next day. So, you know, where I lived, I always watched how in spring these crazy, you know, work projects started sometimes ripping up a road that they had just laid down the year before, and there were certain roads that were taken up, it seemed to me, every year. Um, so to guarantee that the money is spent quickly on a, on a small project at the end of the year so that, you know, next year they get the big budget again. So this, the same thing also happens in all systems. So you can imagine that when this happens and this ginormous money flow starts coming in to an organization like MI5, they very quickly have to hire lots of agents, they have to double the number of their informants, and everything has to double. Everything has to double. But when you turn it on, suddenly the first year when you hired nobody, they are swimming in money. They are absolutely swimming in money. You see, because the, the hiring process has to be gradual, but if you get the money straight away and you know this is like, it's like, you know, someone opening a, a second pipe, you know, 
it's just flooding in. The money is just flooding in. So what you expect from that, first of all, who do you think they can hire? Well, there's a lot of unemployed people, so they can only hire the unemployed, right? Or they can suck off people who are in other jobs, but that's unlikely, um, unless they give them really lucrative jobs. So you're looking for the system very rapidly recruiting unemployed people, young people who are maybe not in jobs, pensioners maybe, who want to earn money because they can't pay for the heating of their house this lot okay so what you expect when the budget doubles is that suddenly there will be this you know fantastic amount of new hires who will be very quickly taught the tools of the trade now what are the tools of the trade for MI5 it will be surveillance right so it will be stalking people it will be bugging cars bugging phones bugging houses it will be, you know, following people. It will be setting up certain scenes that they control. Okay, that sort of stuff. That Those are the tools of the trade, you know. I mean, it's essentially surveillance, stalking, sabotage. You know, street theater, scenes, disconcerting scenes, trying to read out people's reactions, listening into their conversation, anything that, in, that can, first of all, get information from them and then influence them you know, in their life will be it. So who are you going to train these people on? All these new, you know, unemployed pensioners and young people. Who? Well, you need a lot of subjects for that, test subjects. So just by this fact that the budget from, of MI5 doubled, you expect a lot of unsuspecting people to come forward and say, I seem to be stalked by people. I seem to have my house under surveillance. You know, I, all these things that seem to be happening. So this is not a surprise, people. That's what you freaking expect. Okay? Because and all of it is about money. He said to me, but one of the shocking things that happened was this. Because of who I was, sometimes there would be people from the United States who knew me that would stay in my home. He said, I had a man that came that worked for the U.S. government that had a laptop computer. And he said to me, is there any preacher in the United States? want to talk to you personally. He said, well, I know one. I, I, he's very well known, but I don't have his number. He said, don't worry about it. He flipped the laptop open, hit a few numbers. He said, I've got every number, including, listen to this, a private phone that nobody knows he has. Really? He said, let's call that number. So he, 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 he called it in, and the preacher answered. And immediately when this man said, this is so-and-so from Israel, he said, how did you get this number? Nobody knows I have this phone. This is my private, private phone number that only a few people have. He said, well, let's not talk about that. So he talked to the man for a few moments, but the preacher was very upset because he never told him how he got the number. So then he asked this man with our government, with that computer, he said, let me ask you a question. How, why do you have that man's number? He said, we've got everybody's number. He said, I can call, I can contact and tap into any phone of anyone. Spread. I mean, that's the whole problem that he found with the program was that it did massive, sweeping, dragnet domestic surveillance on people who were under no suspicion whatsoever. Normally, you would go to court and get a probable cause warrant because you think a foreign terrorist may be doing something illegal. Um, and to turn these laws and completely put them on American people, aim them, use them against Americans who have done nothing and are under, not, they're not under e even any kind of suspicion for anything. Um, I think a lot of people feel violated by that, and they should. What concerns me that the government, instead of investigating why this agency has been violating the Constitution, the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, Section 215 of the Patriot Act, and all these laws, um, suddenly, you know, the first issue is let's find out who the whistleblower is and we're going to open a criminal investigation into him or her.